She is a beautiful, beautiful snake. Oh, she's giving me a good squeeze right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get her back in her cage. You can see she's a runner too. And trying to keep her in check is not easy at all. Yeah, we're gonna leave that up. Watch oh, yourself. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I am going to show you the giant snakes today. That's right, all of my reticulated pythons. And yes, Perdita is one of the giant snakes, but of course she is a cow reticulated python. And this particular locality actually does typically stay small. Normally a cow reticulated python isn't going to get much bigger than 10 or 12 feet, but what an absolutely gorgeous snake. But of course reticulated pythons, or in particular mainland reticulated pythons, can get 25 plus feet long. So they are absolutely incredible and I'm going to take you on the journey of each and every reticulated python that we keep here at the Reptarium and at BHB. Here's a reticulated python that I don't show you guys nearly enough. For those of you that have been following the vlog for all, you know that this is actually Ricky. Yes, originally Ricky was kind of the mate to Lucy, you know, Ricky and Lucy, but he is actually a Jampea dwarf, but he's an albino. But let me just explain what that means. Basically, the Jampea dwarfs and then there's super dwarfs and all kinds of other localities of dwarfs are actually island forms that stay much smaller than the mainland. But what a lot of people don't understand is they'll say, I have an albino dwarf reticulated Python. But what happens is once you breed an albino mainland into a dwarf, obviously it isn't really a dwarf reticulated python anymore. It's only 50% dwarf reticulated python. So like with Ricky here, it's a little bigger than some of the Jampea animals. But granted, it's much smaller than the mainland animal. He's about seven or eight years old and he is only about 10, maybe 11 foot long. And of course you get into super dwarfs, which are much smaller than even the Jampea dwarf. They can sometimes max out at six or seven foot. But again, Again, once you breed them into a mainland, you're going to start getting that giant blood back into them, if that makes sense. So again, if you want a really small reticulated python, the real only small ones are ones that are either completely dwarf from dwarf localities or one that has been bred back. So you can take an animal like Ricky here that's 50% Jampea, breed it back to a dwarf, and now it's three-quarter dwarf, which means it even gets smaller and smaller. Just food for thought, but nevertheless, Ricky is amazing. Then, of course, we have Night Fury. The beautiful black reticulated python. This of course is a golden child motley. The golden child and the motley mixed together gets that really solid black animal with all that beautiful iridescence. He has a few other genes in him as well. Absolutely a stunning snake. Again, I love Perdita, that white with black freckling, but I tell you what, this solid black retic is pretty amazing. And again, because of all the genes that are in this, in particular golden child, these typically won't get as large as the really big mainlands. They're typically a 12 to maybe 14, maybe 15 foot type of animal, they're not going to get 20 plus foot because the golden child's locality that came off that island version was actually a smaller locality. Not really a dwarf Jampea, but definitely a smaller locality. Nevertheless, Night Fury is gorgeous. Now we're going to get into the giants, the mainland variety. This is actually a lavender albino, and of course this is Daisy. She's one of the big girls. She's about 8 years old, and of course the sister to Lucy. Now she's just shy of 8 18 foot, she, I think she's 17 foot 6 inches if I'm not mistaken, whereas Lucy is over 20 foot now. So these guys are the big ones for sure. And again, it was all about locality with these guys. The fact that this locality, the mainland locality, are the giants and that's where the lavender albinos and albino reticulated pythons first came from. And of course the story is pretty interesting. An albino came into the country and Bob Clark is actually the one that got the animal. It was a male and believe it or not, it had a broken back. It could barely even move its rear end. So a lot of people thought there was no way that he was ever going to be able to reproduce them. And when he actually got a clutch of eggs, there were even some people, myself included, to be honest with you, wondered, hey, is that maybe retained sperm from another male breeding? Because after all, how could an animal that had a broken back actually father a clutch? Well, sure enough, he produced heterozygous. He raised them up. And a few years later, he produced these beautiful lavender albino reticulated pythons. And that really is what changed the game when it came to these giant pythons. 
ones. I've mentioned before that my girl Sunfire here is really a future big ambassador for us. We've been handling her a lot and she's got a really great personality, but she likes to run a little bit. So as she's getting more comfortable with being handled all the time, she is gonna be amazing. So I think that again, when it comes to like the daisies and even the sunrises, which of course is an albino Burmese, that Sunfire here will eventually be one of those ambassador animals. And of course the reason we named her Sunfire, she's a Sunfire Super Tiger absolutely one of the prettiest reticulated pythons we own and again she's getting much better about being handled even though she likes to move a lot she is still a stunning snake and you know I'm realizing I have quite a few reticulated pythons it's kind of interesting because I only really had two which was Lucy and Daisy for quite a while and now I've been getting more and more of them because they're just such amazing beautiful animals of course Casper would fit into that this thing is gorgeous it's a black-eyed leucistic which of course is a super phantom reticulated python interestingly enough the very early black eyed leucistics oftentimes have a lot of stomach issues so a lot of them didn't make it to adulthood. Casper is one of the very first black eyed leucistic retics that Kevin McCurley over at Newark Cruise that actually survived and thrived and I am so happy that eventually he allowed us to bring him in because he's been an incredible animal ambassador and he's in shed right now so when he comes out of shed he's even more gorgeous and people come to the reptarium all the time. They love, love, love handling this little monkey. And then we got my girl Butter Scotch here who is a great great snake this girl has unlimited energy she is always on the go and of course she's a tiger reticulated python but it was actually produced by Jay over at prehistorics and a friend of mine that bought it from said that it was a special tiger I'm still not hundred percent sure what that means but I think there might be some other genes because she definitely looks really good because Lucy is actually a tiger retic as well and this girl looks even better but again she is high energy she's maybe 12 or 13 foot and she's giving me quite a squeeze right now I gotta be honest with you and the thing is when you're handling these big snakes if you're not comfortable you could definitely start to panic because these guys will squeeze you pretty hard and if you're not comfortable you think oh my god I'm gonna black out the truth is they're just trying to hang on to you like you're a tree and uh, she loves to move she is super energetic I still think that she's gonna calm down eventually and be a really good animal ambassador but for now she has got to stop moving because I think that people that don't have experience handling big snakes are definitely gonna have a problem handling this girl she is a beautiful beautiful snake oh she's giving me a good squeeze right now I'm gonna go ahead and get her back in her cage oh, oh. You know there's no way I can do a show about retics and not highlight my girl Lucy. Of course she is my biggest reticulated python at 20 plus foot long, almost 200 pounds. Definitely not a snake you can handle on your own. So I've got Eric and Bruce about to help me, but first thing I have to do is just get her and start to get her out. So hopefully she's gonna be in a good mood. Lucy, you in a good mood today? You in a good mood, sweetheart? I'm just gonna push your head aside just a little bit just to make sure you know I'm not food. And that's the big thing with these guys, right? Is the first thing you want to do is we don't want her to be defensive, number one. And number two, we don't want her to think that we're food. She's not defensive and she knows that I'm not food. Then we can actually handle her. So the big thing is, is to just get her rolling, right? Okay, good. She's running now, so that's good. It's a good thing, but she's starting to S up just a little bit. I don't want that to happen. Okay, okay. And at some point, you just have to go for it. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, you got the front. She's fine. Yep. She's fine. Okay. You want to grab that? Okay. Okay. Push. Ooh, doggy. She has put on some weight. She is a big snake. She <laughs> sure has. You got her right. Oh, my God. All right, two times. Oh. So, you can see, she's a runner too. Ooh. And trying to keep her in check is not easy at all. Oh, I'm just keeping her going. Oh my gosh, this is a big snake. And she's yeah. been putting on a lot of size lately. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh you can my see, goodness. It takes three of us to hold her, and it's still. <laughs> it still can wear you out even with Whoa. three people. She is all muscle. Again, she's about 200 pounds. And she is an amazing, amazing snake. Oh. Ooh, look at how great she is. But again, she's in, the, oh, she's in a pretty good mood today, I think. I hope. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, this is totally a good mood. Oh. And, uh, 
she is a lot of fun. I gotta be honest with you, even though she's a heavy snake and she's definitely a lot of work. We have the oh, oil. No, we got a leak. We got a leak. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Get that. Biggest, uh, biggest oh, oil. Oh, oh, no. Oh, gross. Oh, no. Gross. Oh, no. Get a bucket. Eric, so much. Stick a finger Get in there. Get a bucket. No, no. Log it, Eric. No, stick no, no, no. Finger. Oh, no. Oh, no. Go oh, no. fill up somewhere else. <laughs> okay. So, Eric, go grab a towel. Hey, yeah, I'll get one. Go grab right, one. Go I'll be honest with you, that's the end of the snake that I don't like more. I would almost rather get bit than get pooped on and peed yeah. on back there, because trust me, if you guys could smell right now, oh. it doesn't smell too good. And that's again, another one of big snakes kind of defense mechanism. Sometimes, if they're like, all right, I'm not gonna bite you, but I'm just gonna pee all over you. The other thing that happens is quite honestly, is that when they're moving around, it's moving a lot of things inside there. And so with all that jumbling up, this awesome man, that often happens where they just kind of pee all over the place. But nevertheless, Lucy's amazing. Guys, you did good. Oh man. Hey, all Eric, right, Eric, not so were, much, huh? Yeah, you were kind of, I don't know, you were kind of the weak link in this bunch. Yeah. Bruce did good, uh, Eric. I'm still tired from that tokay. <laughs> you can see once she calms down, she's actually a pretty good animal. You just have to wear her out a little bit and get her into a comfortable spot. Man, Lucy is absolutely incredible. And if you want to own a retic, one day you might have to deal with something like this. A couple retics that I haven't shown in a while because they're over here in the dungeon at BHB, of course, is Kelsey's baby Titan. And uh, you think he might eat a rabbit today, possibly? I'm feeling good about it. Okay, let's give it a shot. Titan usually eats rats, but we're gonna try a rabbit today. We'll see what happens. Titan, you want to eat, bud? Oh, maybe not. No. He might not be interested. Oh. Okay, I have a feeling Titan is not gonna take a rabbit today, which is completely fine because he might be starting to get into breeding mode, which by the way, Kelsey, next week we're gonna start putting Titan back in with Lucy. Awesome. So uh, really, Kelsey is the one that talked me into breeding him last year, so I figured it'd be really cool to do it again this year. And a few people asked me, are you gonna breed Lucy this year? Well, now you have the answer. Let's go ahead and see if Kronos eats. If Kronos doesn't eat, that's okay too. But let's go ahead and see if he will. And of course, Kronos is another titanium, so let's see if he wants to eat. He looks a little interested, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay, so Cronus isn't gonna eat either. But again, male retics start shutting down when they start wanting to get into breeding mode. So regardless, there you go. Titan and Kronos, beautiful titanium retic. And of course, we were just talking about breeding Lucy and Titan together. This is one of the babies that we're holding back from Lucy and Titan. Of course, these are Citron Tigers. Because titanium is the super version of Citron, these guys are absolutely wonderful, beautiful animals. And I tell you what, I love reticulated pythons. And that basically sums up what we've got going on here at BHB and the Reptarium with reticulated pythons, but we are certainly gonna get more. On my wish list would be a pied reticulated python, and there's a couple other retics that I'm really looking at thinking, wow, I wouldn't mind adding them. So we are definitely have a growing colony of reticulated pythons. They are amazing animals. And if you ever want to work with giant snakes, or for that matter, if you wanna get super dwarfs that don't get that big, reticulated pythons are super intelligent, super amazing animals, and we absolutely love them to death. And there you go, guys, our huge Huge snakes. I hope that you guys liked it. A bunch of people had made a comment saying, yes, do a showcase on just your reticulated pythons. So I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. I am gonna go ahead and end the vlog here and wish you an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. As always, your guys' support means the world to me. And I truly, truly, truly mean that. I do love you guys. Do me a couple favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button if you like the video? Can you turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video? Make a comment down below because just like this video, I read your comments and if you want me to do something, I will be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.